online greetings as well. I would ask that you would open your heart to what the Lord would say to you in the next few minutes and just be willing to receive his word. I'm going to be sharing in this series and follow Pastor Craig who last week talked to you about the being part of following Christ and the virtue of seeking the Lord in your life. And we're simply teaching you from the book of 2 Timothy and we're talking specifically from chapter 2 today and I'm going to share this chapter with you and I'm looking so forward to doing that. I again want you to know the joy it is to get to break God's word. I mean I really like about Wednesday or Thursday, I start getting itchy to get up here and to talk about God's Word because I love preaching these days and just so thankful for the opportunity to teach you straight from the Word of God this morning. Uh, last week on Sunday, um, I want to share something that happened with me because it ties to this passage that Paul wrote to us about. Again, remember, Paul is writing at the age of 60 to a young man who is at the age of 30 who is leading a church. And the church, surprise, has some problems. People in the church are chattering. The people in the church are causing divisions. People in the church are creating issues for Timothy. And Paul had to get a hold of him and say, Timothy, listen to me. He actually called him son. When you're 60, you can look at the 30-year-old and say, son, because you're kind of speaking to him about some things you've learned. So last week, Sunday morning, I was a long way from here in another state and woke up on Sunday morning. I ran downstairs in this nice hotel I was staying at to get some breakfast. And when I sat down for breakfast, there was a group of guys in their 20s, probably 12, 15 of them in their 20s. My seat just happened to be close enough that I could hear everything they were saying. There is no judgmentalism in this sentence I'm going to say. I want you to know that that's not where it's coming from. But I'm sitting there and I'm listening to these young men. And let's just say their conversation and their behavior um, lacked some things. They were sharing about last night. And they were talking about things they had done. And I'm just listening. And I started to think about, I'm getting ready in just a moment. I'll wrap my breakfast up and I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to drive to this place I'm going to preach. And I'm going to preach to a crowd of people like I am this morning. How will these guys ever hear that message? Would they even be interested in hearing the message? If I even said to them, hey guys, if you follow me, i got to drive about 30 minutes. I'm going to be speaking at a church. Would they even want to go? Because in our world today, there's two factions of people, two sections, two groups. The people who like church and the people who don't. And one of the reasons people don't is because of the second half of the second chapter of Timothy, chapter 2. And I'm going to start with the second half of the passage today, and then we'll go to the first half to finish the message. And I want to read to you um, the theme of the second part of 2 Timothy. I'm just going to read three sections to you. I want to see if you can see if there's a general theme running through these verses. You just listen and you decide if you hear a theme. Straight out of the Word of God, here's what Paul said. And he starts with this. He says, Timothy, keep reminding church people of this, okay? Keep reminding them. So I get to do it today. I get to literally read what he told Timothy to remind them of. And here we are sitting in church, and I want to remind you of this. Here they are. See if you see a theme. First, Warn them before God against quarreling about words. Church people, listen. Warn them before God, before God, against quarreling about words. It is no value and only ruins those who listen. That's the first thing he said. Second thing he said is this. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Third, 
Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. Do you think there's a theme there? Church people get caught up in stuff that's not what the church is about, is what Paul's saying to Timothy. You say, could that happen here? You think? When I served as youth pastor here, I recall a situation that happened probably five years, half my time in here. I was here for 10 years or so, probably five years in. I remember a big old, big old situation that happened. And I remember all of us pastors being called in and nine or 10 of us got called into the offices and well, there's a group of people here at church not happy about something, and we need to talk about it because they're saying they're going to leave because they're not liking things are not going the way they want. Big old quarrel. And I remember how much time it took. I remember how much energy it took. I remember, you know, if you wanted to work on a sermon, you weren't up for it. You're tired. And Paul is saying to Timothy, be careful, son. Because church has got broken people in it, and they like to chatter. And the reason they do that, Timothy, is because they don't know who they really answer to. See, they think they answer to the church, but they don't. They answer to God Almighty. Like here in the church today, some of you, if I ask you, say, well, where are you a member? Well, I'm a member here at Central Wesleyan. That's great. That's good. I'm glad you are. That's not the ticket into heaven. You're not going to show up at heaven someday and say, but God, I was, I was like a central Wesley. <laughs> Don't get caught up in that. Get caught up in I'm here because God's allowed me to be a part of this church that worships the one true God, and I want to keep the focus and attention of this church on that. And I'm hoping there's somebody sitting in here today that as you listen to this, you feel real guilty about some of your godless chatter this week. Stuff you've said about either the church or people in the church or this particular thing or that particular thing. Make your decisions. Have your rules. Get your guidelines. No question. Fine. Go for it. But don't make it your God. Because I have a feeling a lot of the people like those young men sitting in that restaurant last Sunday morning would say, I don't really have any interest in that. All they are is a bunch of judgmental people who always want to point out all my issues and faults. And I know one of them. I work with them. And trust me, they got some flaws too. I'm looking. Let me just check. Yep, flawed, 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 flawed. <laughs> flawed. We're covered. So we're flawed people who came to a place and we're seeking to do this place as best we can, seeking to be a place that brings honor and glory to the Lord. Today, I'm preaching to you straight out of God's word. I'm not coming up with this stuff. I'm telling you, Paul said to Timothy, tell them to be careful because because they get caught up in it. And he actually named two people. Paul actually called them out by name, Hymenaeus and Philetus. They were a couple of people who began to teach something other than the true word of God. And Paul literally, Paul literally said, get them out. They're of the devil. I mean, I've often thought what it would be like, Pastor Craig, to walk up, name one of you, and say, you're of the devil, out. <laughs> be crazy, wouldn't it? Paul wrote their name down and said, they're the devil. Wow. You know what that tells me? He wasn't worried about who he was answering to. He was worried about making sure he answered to the one true God, and he really didn't care if people liked him or not. I love that. And he was telling Timothy, Timothy, listen, in church, there will be people who kind of want you to like them, and they'll, like, like, take you out, and they'll buy you something. Don't get caught up in that, Timothy. Enjoy it. But don't let that become your God. And I just pose the thought to you today. Are you a chatterer? Could you be the reason? Is there, is there like any chance you're the reason your neighbor doesn't want to be here today? If, there, if that's true, own it. Because Paul 
said to Timothy, keep reminding them. So like we could say this same thing next week. Hey, 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 hey. No godless chatter here, please. And I got to tell you, like, I look back at that situation that happened back when I was here. Can't even remember what it was about. Can't even remember. But I do remember that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Let's make sure that's what we carry forth and remember. So Paul says that. That's the latter half of the chapter. Now we're going to go to the first half of 2 Timothy. So we're kind of doing it backwards. The reason Paul had said all that was because of what he said in this first part of the chapter. He starts with this, like, this really isn't like a fun invitation, but Paul's word to Timothy are these, join me in suffering. Like, you, like, you don't read that and go, yes, I want in on that. We don't like suffering. We do anything we can do to keep from suffering, right? And we'll go out of our way to avoid suffering. And Paul says, join me, Timothy. Take up your cross. Take up your fight for the faith. And I want to pause a minute here. Somebody in here today, you're suffering. Something in your family, something has gone awry, something's away from the Lord. A child is wayward. A marriage is shattered. And Paul says, in those times when you're a follower of the Lord, and he's speaking specifically to church people, in those times, lean into me. Because you see, when you face suffering, you will go one of two ways. You will go, I got to lean into God more. Or you will say, well, I guess he doesn't love me. I'm walking away. Suffering creates two paths, a path to the Lord and a path that says, well, he must not care about me. And I want to pose to you that some of you who fall into this path or have seen people fall into that path, I want to say there are some false teachers out there who say to you, just claim it. Just say, you'll never suffer. You'll never go through. Just claim it. Say, and if you, if you ever think anything different, I want, I'm calling it out, and I'll get letters for this, and I'll send them straight to Craig, and he can burn them. Because I don't want anybody in here to think that the suffering you're going through is where God's trying to destroy you. That's a lie from the enemy. Satan hates you. He's the one who brings suffering. We wouldn't have suffering if it wasn't a sinful world. Some suffering of your choice sometimes. Some suffering because of other people's choices. Some because we just live in a world that's full of sickness and pain. And I want to speak to that one who might be in here today, who might be actually online and you can't even get here because of your physical issues. Paul said, join me. I know what it feels like to suffer. He had physical issues. He had mental issues. He had stuff he faced that would have been crazy and great trials. And he says to all of you who are in that spot, you are my brother, you are my sister, Join me. Let's go deeper in God. Because suffering, I have a couple little points. Suffering gives you an opportunity to know Christ deeper. I would have never dreamed that I would have gone through some of the things that I've gone through as a pastor. I remember when I first became a pastor and it was going to be rocking and rolling and having a good time. And I've gone through some stuff that it's crazy. And every one of those things drew me deeper to Jesus. And they sucked. And I'm a better man for it. And if you're here today and you're struggling, join Paul. Join your heroes of the faith who stood tall and strong through the junk. Join him. This dude got what he was saying because he experienced it. He had caused it for other people, and he had now received it, and he says to all of us, join us in this journey of knowing Christ deeper. 
Because, point number two, suffering teaches us that our security and peace is not found in anything in this world. It's not. This world at some point will trip you up. This world at some point will sit you in a seat of despair. This world at some point will push you off the edge of the cliff. And when that moment comes, Paul says, no Jesus right there. Seek him right there. This is really interesting. So right before I did that trip where I was out of town a long way from here, uh, the previous Friday to that, Thursday to that, Thursday, I was driving here in Highland. I was going to run an errand. My phone rang in the car. I answered it, car by myself. Friend of mine from here. Much younger than me from here. A friend of mine on the phone. Dan, hey, man, I haven't heard from you in a while. Hey, you preached at Central a couple weeks ago. I said, yeah, that week, whatever. I said, yeah. I said, man, it was so fun to get to do that. And he's like, oh, it's great. We talked for a while. And he said, well, I'm calling you to tell you something. And I said, what's up? Phone call's going great. What's up? He's like, ah, I just got a call. I just found out I have cancer. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I got, I have cancer. I said, what, how, what, you know, all the questions that would come out. And I said, where are you? He said, I'm, I'm sitting in my office right now. I said, dude, I'm driving. Hang on a second. Don't tell me anymore. I'm coming there. Drove to his office, walked in, closed his door, sat down. Just let him talk. He talks a long time. We cry together. We pray together. And I'm getting ready to go. I said, man, I'm so glad I came by to see you. Love you, man. Love you too. He looked right at me. He looked right in my eyes and said, Dan? I said, yeah. He said, I'm so glad God's allowing me to go through this. And I went, what? He said, I can't believe how much I've deepened already in a week. I can't believe how much more I appreciate my marriage today. He said, I'm so, I mean, I started crying. I'm like, do you hear what you're saying, bro? He said, yeah. This is really good for me. <laughs> he chose the path of going I'm going to go deeper today. Somebody sitting in here, this is really personal for you right now because you've got some news or something or whatever it is, and you go, I don't know what to do with this. And I'm inviting you along with Paul to go a little deeper. Join him. Third thing I wrote down is um, it reminds me of my frailty and God's power. We're frail people. All of you in here who, who don't feel frail, you go, I'm not frail. I run 10 miles, I'm strong. That's awesome. You're frail. The fact that you have to do this shows me you're frail because your ego is struggling. So you just need to keep realizing you ain't all that. You ain't God. You're made in his image, but you're not him. And suffering brings us to a point of having to know that. Then Paul does something really fun. Paul does something really fun. Like, I'm thinking as he was writing, he's probably going, eh, this could be getting a little boring. So he writes in three little stories, three little analogies. It's like me. When I, when I stand up here, I'll read some scriptures, and I'll say a little something to go, okay, that'll, that'll keep them with me. It's just part of communication. Paul tells the story. He tells the story of a soldier, he tells the story of an athlete, and he tells the story of a farmer. And then I want to show you something. Paul writes this after he mentions these three. We're going to look at it a second, but let me tell you, literally reading what he said to Timothy, he said, Timothy, reflect on what I'm saying. The Lord will give you insight into it. So when I was in my office reading, I got to that part 
reflect on what I'm saying, I was like, I need to sit down and reflect. See, reflection requires, shh, chill, 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 be quiet. Don't rush this. So I'm not going to rush it here. You go, really? You're going to sit there a while? A while. We're going to reflect on the three things he says about each of these paths of life, things we do in life. Because with each one, he wrote a little verse to Timothy. Like, he made it personal. And he said, Timothy, I want you to know whose you are. I want you to understand and know you are here serving the king of kings. I better, I better pin this in a way that you get it. So he starts with the soldier, and he writes this. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. So I read it, and you guys are looking at it on the screen, and I sit there in my little stool and went, what does that mean? As I reflect on it, there's a few things that come to mind. I've never been in the military. For those of you who have, you're going to get this and can share this way better than me. But you reflect on this, and it makes sense. A, a soldier in the army honors his commanding officer. Whatever that commanding officer tells him to do, he does. When you go to boot camp, you don't walk into boot camp saying, I know all these guys are getting their hair cut, and these, but I'm going to keep my hair long. You don't do that. You don't say, oh, 20 push-ups, I'm going to do three. No. You do whatever your commanding officer tells you to do. Many of you are too old to understand this, but as I was sitting in my chair in my office reflecting, I started laughing out loud because I used to watch this show, and there was this guy on his name, Gomer Powell. <laughs> Gomer Powell was in the military, and he did whatever his commanding officer said. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I was like, yeah, that's what I did. We're Gomer Piles. And our commanding officer is not Central Wesleyan Church. Our commanding officer is not our opinions. Our commanding officer is not our parents. Our commanding officer ultimately is God Almighty. You belong to him. Do you understand that? Do you understand today you are not ultimately accountable? Like after this message, I'm accountable to Dan, no chance. You're accountable to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is your commanding officer. And, and Paul said to Timothy, you're a soldier in this army. And we're going to do and we're going to stick true to what God calls us to do. And we're not going to stop. And he said to him, sometimes, Timothy, that church that you're the pastor over, they're going to try to lead you and tell you what you need to do. Don't listen to them. Listen to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <laughs> Your commanding officer today is God Almighty. And you answer to him. And the word very clearly says to us, don't try to please everybody. There are people in here today, you are worn out trying to please people. You're worn out trying to make somebody happy. I realize you have responsibility at work. Great, fulfill it. But ultimately, guess what? Your boss at work doesn't decide if you get heaven. That's a wonderful news. God Almighty decides. Please him. Timothy, please him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people online, please him. Commanding officer. Secondly, he talks about the athlete. I really like this one. I like sports. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except they competing according to the rules. You don't just to get to play and run in an event. If you're in a if you're in a hundred yard dash, you don't run 80 yards and stop and say, I'm done, I'm tired of running, it's over. No, you gotta run to the line. Now, here's what's cool. The the Olympics started in 776 BC. So Paul would have been alive and the Olympics would have already happened a, a lot before he got there. And many scholars believe that in Corinth, Paul would have been in Corinth 
when the trials were happening, like time trials and all that stuff. He would have been there. He would have seen all the prep. He would have gone and sit in the stands because to get to the Olympics, you had to win in Corinth to get to go to the next level. Same as in our day. You got to go around to different regional things and then you make it. Paul watched athletes. That's why he writes about them so much. We're in the middle of March Madness. And I love it. Like, I'm loving it. The game last night was awesome. Hopefully good games today. I love sports. love games. But let me tell you something about basketball. When you play basketball, you have to do what's called dribble. You don't just all of a sudden, today on one of these games, one of the guys won't go, you know what, I don't want to dribble anymore. I want to run. I'm just going to run down the court. No, 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 no. You're going you're gonna to be called for traveling. The really tall guy, the guy last night, seven foot tall. He can't stand under like the rim, like the opposing team's rim. He can't stand under the rim and put his hand up and go, shoot it, I'll just knock it out. Can't do that. It's against the rules. You've got to compete according to the rules. If you want to play in the NCAA March Madness Championship, you will compete by the rules. And then all of a sudden... We're good with that. We're good with driving rules. We're good with, you know, our work environment rules. But then all of a sudden we get over into this thing called the Christian walk and we go, well, I, I don't know, I want to do it the way I want to do it. I, I, I don't really, I don't like, like, this book lays out some rules and I don't agree with some of them. They're, they don't apply to me. Okay. You, you can say that, but... This is truth. If you're a follower of God Almighty and Paul's saying to Timothy, this is the guidelines. Like tell those people at church if they don't participate by the rules Jesus Christ laid out, they don't get to stay in the game. And he said, you got to finish the race by the rules. Have you noticed people don't like rules? It's interesting, isn't it? We're, we're fine with rules in certain situations, but not, 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 not this one. Not these spiritual rules. I'm, I'm good with sports rules, but in Paul goes, no. No, you don't get to pick and choose. I'm just going to apply it there. Look, God's word applies to you too. And today, those of you who are followers of Christ and you claim his name, are you living by the words he taught? That's the rules. Get in the game. And do this, ready? Because you know He is your Lord and God. And you want, you love Him and you want to follow His guidelines and rules. That's, we do it because we lo I love you. You love me, I love you. I know, I know. You're sitting listening to me and going, that makes sense. Much tougher to apply. <laughs> Go play with the rules. And this one over here. Hmm. 2 Timothy 2, 6, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Man, I read that one. I sat in my chair and I went, now that one seems like it has a different theme. That one over there has that theme. That one's got that theme. And then it's like a hardworking farmer. And I'll tell you, the, the word out of that text that jumped out at me was hardworking. In our world... Even in 2023. I don't know what it would have been like back in there. I didn't, I didn't live in, you know, those early ADs. But in 2023, of the three on the screen, of the three on the screen that doesn't get a lot of respect in our society, here. The others seem to come with some accolades. If today a soldier walked in here, and those who of, of you are, and sometimes we have soldiers here, and when they come in dressed in, their, in, in, in all their, their military uniform, you, you look at you see them, you even walk up to them, hey, man, thanks for your service. You look sharp. There's some mm that goes with it, you know. They're usually fine-tuned. You know, the, the runner today, if someone won a race, if somebody was the regional district champions and you see them and they walk in today, you're like, hey, congratulations. Good job. Proud of you. But the farmer, people kind of go, eh, you know, you got a hardworking, dirty job. And, you know, you know, our, our society kind of belittles the farmer. I want to tell you, and you know, I grew up, my grandfather was a farmer. I watched him 
can still remember him plowing behind the mule and corn. And he didn't have a tractor at that point. He would plow behind that mule. And man, oh man, he did it. I would get on the bus, a little boy. I would get on the bus for school. And it, that would be, you know, 8, 8.30 in the morning. I'd get off the bus at 3, 34. That dude would still be in the field behind a mule plowing eight hours, ten hours a day in the hot sun. Man, was he a hard worker. And society kind of looks at that and goes, yeah. And I want to say, first of all, I want to say to the farmers who are in this room today, thank you for what you do. You're a reason we have food, so bless you and thank you for providing what you provide for us. And Paul picked you out. He picked you out of the crowd. I love that. I love that. Because you got a soldier, yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, there's, that gets attention. And the accolades for the runner, but I want to make sure I honor the ones who provided food for me today. And let, let me tell you something about a farmer. It, it fits all together when I say the sentence, they put their head down and they plow through. They do it. The rains come. The seasons of drought come. We watch the corn in the area we grow and we go, huh, been a lot of, been a lot of rain, good rain this year. Ah, knee high by 4th of July. We have all these little phrases and we watch it. And Paul said, that hard-working farmer, they got some good rewards coming. You in here who you've been a long battle of serving the Lord many years and you're tired and weary on the journey, I got good news for you. There is a finish line and you got something good coming. It's called heaven. Your planting, your hard work, your toil will be rewarded. And remember, remember the picture up on the screen. I picked that one on purpose because it's non-mechanized. There was no machines. Paul honored those who stood there with the teal, stood there with the hoe, stood there with some man-made tools and grappled with that dirt. And that's what some of your life feels like today. Man, I'm grappling here. I mean, I got some, I got some hand. I, I'm, Dan, I'm plowing through. Good job. Good job. And Paul says, I recognize you. I honor you. <laughs> and then on top of all that, so he shows all these, and then on top of that, he says, now you need to know, life has a way with circumstances and everything else to limit you. And then he says this, I want you to live in such a way understanding that God's word is not chained. It will not be thwarted. It will not be stopped. There's somebody out today. I'm here preaching God's word. You've come to hear God's word. There's somebody out there today who is doing just the opposite. They're out there trying to figure out how to slow down this thing called faith, how to, how to stop Christ from being able to go forward, how to try to mute people like me and what we say. It's just the world we live in. It happened in Paul's day too. They would love to shut all this down. And what I'd say to you, even if they did, if I was not allowed to preach, this church got closed. You ready? God's word cannot be stopped. It will go forth. It will go forth in power. It ain't nothing to do with me. It's all about him. And today, Paul was saying to Timothy in this passage, and it relates to us, sometimes in this stinking life, you get tripped up. You fall off the edge. Junk happens. But you keep doing what? If anybody got limited, it would have been Paul. I mean, this dude had a power-packed message that he went around and made difference and started churches, and he gets jailed. He gets jailed. I mean, how much more could he have done if he hadn't been in jail? Oh, 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 that's right. He wrote a lot of these books in jail. God's word does not get stopped because Paul got chained. God's word will not get stopped, though you sometimes get thwarted. The point is, we might not matter as much as we think. So keep that in perspective. In fact, I 
want to share this thought with you. Life struggles sometimes limit what we can accomplish. But regardless of our human limitations, nothing limits God's power. He is omnipotent. He is powerful. He is everlasting. This morning, you serve. Hey, good news for you. You serve an everlasting God. If you watch the news a lot, you forgot that. And I want to tell you today, I don't know your circumstance. It was interesting. First service, I was in here just walking and praying, and a young man, 33, stopped me as I was walking back. I was going to go back into the green room area. And as I was walking back, he just stopped me a minute. I sat with him, talked to him. Came to church really down today. Really discouraged. There's somebody else sitting here. You feel that today. A circumstance in life has beat the crap out of you, and you don't even, you barely got here. In fact, you that are watching online, you didn't get here maybe because you're struggling. God loves you. He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. You say, but Dan, answer this, this, this. I can't. I couldn't answer that young man's question this morning. I said to him, I don't have the answer. I tell you, seek God. He will provide. Hey, I remember a song. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways you cannot see. So today I ask you to trust him with your life. Know that he is God. Know that you belong to him. If you don't, you've come to the right place. We invite you to know him this morning. So Lord, I pause to pray over this simple thought and simple message remind us today that you are king of kings and lord of lords mighty unstoppable unchainable and we love you help us today to leave here more determined to walk with you bless the 33 year old who is discouraged be with the grandfather who wanted to give up be with a kid in here who feels lost remind them that they know you when they ask you into their life and because we know you we can be steady because you're steady and we worship you and we thank you for your goodness to us in God's name we all said amen join me in standing
I stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be for my feelings. I hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Because death is just the doorway into resurrection life. If you join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory, all the angels and the saints, my heart will still. Hallelujah, what a good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming. I want to remind you, Easter is in two weeks, so grab your invite cards. Grace and peace. God bless you. You are dismissed.